Um, episode two was fucking bonkers. Like it, episode two felt like one of those really intense edge of your seat episodes of Dexter back in Dexter's heyday. Like I'm talking like season three, four, you know, where he's always about to get caught and he has to kill someone without the people like that are right around the corner knowing about it or like hiding a body or, you know, ugh, dude, that's the, that is the vibe I got from this episode. It was so damn good. And there were so many great moments, like just character moments, like stuff that happened between people. Um, I absolutely hate Johnny VD now. Like, not that I didn't already kind of, you know, dislike him. Like you're kind of made to dislike him. Um, but, ah, uh, even more so, right? Like he calls him penguin in this, you know, it's a, you know, it's an insult because we haven't heard it at all yet. And it's like this thing that people call him behind his back or call him disparagingly. Right. Um, and, and Johnny VD calls him that like yells it down the hall with other people around. Oh, I love the way they're setting up like the hatred, uh, the kind of vitriol between characters like this. Like VD has no respect whatsoever for this dude. And then, you know, Oz feels like, you know, he doesn't get the respect he deserves from anyone. Um, and, and, and this chump, right, um, has more power than him, and he, and he really shouldn't. Like, he's not the head of the family, but <clears throat> he's kind of acting like it at times. Um, it's quite... I don't know. It, it's so much fun, the way that, they, that they're setting things up. Um, Oz obviously wants to set him up. We, we set that up in this episode. Like the plan now is to implicate one of the Falcons as the person who, who killed Alberto, um, just as a power play to take over the family. And it's so smart. It's so smart. It's like the way he's playing, not only the Falcons, but the Maronis and then trying to suck up to Sophia and dude it's like um it's such a mob show it's such a crime drama that it doesn't even feel at all like you're watching something DC but at the same time there's so many things like in the background and and little uh mentions and character moments and things that that remind you that you're in Gotham City um, dude, this this is like on the verge of being one of the best things I've watched this year. If it continues on the way it is, like I said I, in episode one, like if it continues on the path that it's on, it's, it's going to be fantastic. Well, episode two just like blew that out of the water. I mean, episode one was great, but episode two was like edge of your seat uh, um, tension at all times. Um, I loved you know right there at the at towards the end where he you think he's going to set up johnny v well they, they have this whole laid plan right him and vic have this whole laid out plan of what they're going to do they're going to plant these jewels in this car and they're going to place the blame on vd but then all that goes to shit when someone who who is privy to the fact that oz is behind everything is kidnapped by the falcons and he's about to be tortured and then oz has to sneak around in the house through the mansion down to the basement kill this guy which he wasn't going to kill him right he like it was a last minute decision to even <clears throat> do all of this but then he goes down there and he's going to uh he, he just needs to get the guy to say that it's johnny vd it's not you know don't mention my name say johnny vd but the guy's so drugged up and he knows the way that sophia tortures people that this guy's going to spill this guy's going to spill his guts so oz has to take him out brutal you know and i, I feel like it's only going to get worse and worse each episode i feel like we're kind of on oz's side as an audience member right now very much like this 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 has very very soprano tony soprano feels right where you're like rooting for this guy but eventually he does some shit so foul that you're like okay i, I i'm not on this guy's side anymore and i don't think we're there yet i don't think we're there yet but i think this is like the slow build 
to some of those moments where towards the end of this series, we're going to be like, dude, this is not a guy you want to root for, you know, uh, just, just brutal. Like you, you get his pain, you get where he's coming from, you get his motivations, you know, you can, you can feel for the character and you can, um, kind of root for the character at this point because everyone around him you feel like is even more of a piece of shit um and they don't respect him and so you kind of feel for him you kind of feel that and it it i'm telling you by the end of this series you're not gonna like oz you're going to i mean you don't you're not gonna want him to die okay because he's such an interesting character but you will no longer be rooting for him right and that's how it needs to be right but if you want to put him in future batman films if you want his uh character to continue in this world this matt reeves batman world um you can't want to kill him off you know what i mean you it, you, you you want it to build to a point where like you, you kind of feel for him you, you get the character motivations but then it's a bridge too far and then you're still rooting for batman to take him down right you can't be having the audience root for the penguin to uh, beat the Batman at some point. Um, but who knows, man? It could be a crazy twist. Um, Matt Reeves is a interesting, interesting uh, filmmaker, and who knows where it's going to go? Like, I'm still holding out hope that we're going to get the Court of Owls as the villain in, in uh, the Batman Two. Uh, there's still been no real. Uh, clues to what that's going to be people have said different things but uh definitely definitely the court of owls is a big possibility with the way they've set things up in the first film with stuff that kind of background stuff that happened uh but anyway that that's besides the point i'm getting off on a tangent about the batman too um but i love that um you know he, he's been trying to butter up Sophia this whole time she sees right through his ass right until the end until she's left with like her family doesn't respect her at all she tried to go about this on her own and, and get the information about who killed her brother because she's like no one even cares about who killed my brother they're all concerned with money and drugs and uh, you know, what's going to happen with the business and but no one wants to avenge her brother so she takes it on her upon herself to to go find someone that can that give her the answers but then Oz comes in screws that plan up and unbeknownst to her you know it, he was behind it all along and then she ends up coming around to him in the end like i love that it got so messed up but it still happened to work out like it's he's really he's doing what he tells vic in the end like in the end he's like vic you can't freak out like that you gotta you gotta think on your feet you gotta be uh dynamic right you you can't be you can't freeze and panic and 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 uh cut and run and uh i love that scene where he puts him down with the bodies in the hole and he's like talking shit to him um but but there's real no there, there's no real fear at this point that he's going to kill vic because he could have done that already but who, who knows who knows you know I, I think vic is his only friend right now and i, I don't think it's, it's not even a friend it's like someone that looks up to him and he really needs that he needs that like someone to uh think that he's something and uh that that's what he gets from vic right um and i think that i mean that would be the ultimate way to make you hate the character right if he does end up killing vic for some selfish reason in the end that would make you no longer rooting for uh oz Cobb, right like it, at the end of the series you'd be like okay fuck this guy um i i do I, at first i wasn't sure i was gonna like the the character of vic like having this guy this kind of uh you know straight man this good guy this this uh decent person being corrupted by oz like it seems like a story that's like eh, i don't know uh but i don't know man I i'm starting to like this kid i'm starting to like his character and uh and, and and you don't know if he's really like just trying to keep oz from killing him in the end you know or, or turning on him or if he's really like is he just really afraid of him and that's why he's so um uh devoted to him or does he really see something in oz that he he can aspire to uh it, it's interesting it's an interesting dynamic and I, and I like the the character stuff between the two anyway uh those are my thoughts on episode two uh, i thought it was 
fucking bananas. I thought it was amazing. Uh, e- even even better than episode one. Like, I mean, it's hard to replace one uh, an episode that introduced something and has something so crazy, like him killing off Alberto Falcone right in the beginning. But um, this episode did it all for me, man. I absolutely loved it, and <clears throat> I like that. Uh, I-, I like that they at the end there they 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 swayed you one way and then it went the other way. So like. All along, you thought it was going to be he, he was going to blame everything on Vidi, and then that kind of goes out the window. But then he kills the guy in the basement, and then he wants to then turn that the blame from that onto Vidi, right? But then it's not Vidi that he frames; it's Sophia's kind of bodyguard guy, which is actually really brilliant because that guy is kind of standing between him and Sophia in a sense, and now. That's opened up. Like, Sophia doesn't have a confidant. She needs one. Oz is there. He's already offered his hand. Here we go. Uh, so, super excited for episode three. Uh, I, I hated waiting 10 days to get this episode, and I'm so glad that we're going to get another one in just one week. Um, anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys thought. Let me know in the comments below, or you can reach out on social media at Real Brett Scott, anywhere and everywhere. And uh, yeah, let's interact. And if you're enjoying this sort of thing where I talk entertainment and pop culture, then please subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you do decide to stick around and subscribe, then I'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks.